Hello and welcome to Jam Hammer. In this video, as October is coming to an end, we're going to take a look at painting up the Orky terrain from the Warhammer 40k Kill Team Octarius set. This box set provides not only two armies of new resin miniatures and the second edition of the rules, but a huge amount of terrain to block line of sight, create firing lanes, act as obstacles, as well as really helping to bring your games to life on the tabletop. We get several large and detailed wall pieces made from scrap metal and girders to provide heavy cover, a towering oil refinery that creates a great vantage point on the battlefield, some gangplanks, and a couple of broken concrete platforms to create elevated walkways. Some of the include terrain pieces, such as the walls and scrap pails made up of tyres, engine parts, and other rusted junk, are also available in the Mechboy Workshop box from Citadel, so if you have that set, or any other similar terrain, you can follow along with this step-by-step -step video to help make it orky. So get your terrain all assembled and glued up, and then apply an all-over coat of primer. And since there's so much metal on these pieces, I decided to go with a coat of black prime from a spray can, as I found that metallic paints tend to look better over a black base. However, just use whatever primer you have, and you can always base these parts by hand if you like. I also want this foundation colour to come through quite a lot, so that the subsequent layers are dark and slubby, to try and convey that these are old, decaying bits of rubbish that have been cobbled together in true orky fashion. So, I'm going to water the paint down a bit more than usual, so that it flows very easily, and hopefully will dry quite translucent, and it'll allow that primer to come through. I'm going to start off with red, and just pick out a couple of pieces on the larger terrain like this to look as if bits of tanks or destroyed vehicles were pried apart and used to make up the bits of wall and floor. Don't want this to look too patchworky, so just going to pick out a few of these bits to be colourful and the rest will be left black or painted over with metallics later. We also want to paint things like this gas can with this red colour, some of the bits of broken vehicles, and this barrel on the scrap pile. And it's not strictly necessary to get this all over your hands, but on the plus side, it does make your paint more to look like a suitably creepy Halloween beverage. So once it's dried, we have this effect where the red is muted, and it looks very weathered. Now, grab your yellow paint, and we want to do the same. Water it down, and put on one very thin coat on a few more select areas like this bit of an old tractor. Don't need to be too neat at this point, as we'll tidy up any spillages later, or likely paint over them with another colour further along. So I also picked out this door with this colour, and we can see that, that dark base is coming through again, so this will look faded, and ironically, like it needs a good lick of paint. I think these canisters on one of the walls will look good with a splash of this yellow too. Next up, grab your dark green, Water it down well, and paint a few more areas like this ammo crate, so that it looks suitably like an imperial armament. We can also use this colour on wires, batteries, or maybe a few more pieces of metal to make it look oxidised. Go for your brown paint next, and catch any bits of wood. There's not many in this selection, as for the most part, the scrap piles and walls are predominantly made of metal, but there are a few planks here and there, such as on these little walkway bits. And I also decided to paint a few areas like these slats on the floor here to look like wood, for just a bit of variety and to break up the metallics. So we've got some colour popping out on these pieces now, and let's add a few more to the mix. So this time grab your blue paint and pick out a few more panels or parts that could have this colour, like this panel canister on the side here, and this section of the ramshackle wall too, to make it look like it was hastily assembled from parts of an old vehicle. We can pick out a few other pieces in this colour too, like these bits that have been welded to the large fuel canister. Next up, we'll be turning to our orky accent colour, so we want to paint plenty of this around to ensure that the terrain looks like it's owned by our boy's clan. If you're running, say, Death Skulls, you might want to paint some more of that blue around from the last stage, or if you have snake bites, grab your leather brown and use that instead at this stage. In the previous video, we painted up the unit of commandos from the Octarius box set, and as these are covert operations boys, the accent colour we went for was purple, as orcs believe that this colour makes them extra sneaky. 
I'll leave a link to this video here, so if you're interested, please do click on that to see how we painted up these minis. Back to the terrain, and we want this accent colour to look much more deliberate, like the orcs went to the trouble of actually painting this, rather than recycling old wreckage. So just going to dilute the purple a little bit so it flows like a normal coat of paint, and then we want to ensure that every piece gets a hit from this, just to tie it all together for our clan. In particular, we want to pick out these large flat pieces with the skulls on them to look like heraldry and emphasise that these belong to our boys. There's a few of these on the larger pieces, so make sure to get them all, as well as a few bits on the oil rig and, of course, the huge skull emblem on the pump here that will hang over the whole kill zone so those wussy Imperial boys know that this is Orc territory. Once those accent panels are dry, we can grab our white and carefully pick out the skulls so that they really stand out. No worries if you slip over at this point, as hopefully the previous paint is still wet on your palette, so you can correct this now, or leave it and go for a more haphazard style. Keep your paint nicely thinned, and just go through picking out all these skulls, and shockingly, there are quite a few dotted about on these orca terrain pieces. Now, to move on to the metallics, and as you may have noticed, there are a lot of metal parts to cover on these pieces. Grab your gunmetal colour, add a little bit of water to your paint so it flows, and give all these pipes, wheel hubs, engines, girders, tubes, and seriously can't tell what some of these things are, a coat of this colour. Oh, and just notice this bit, I think is actually a bit of sprue, not random metal, so we'll need to snip that away later. For some bits, like flooring panels, grates and fenders, we don't need to put a full all over coat on it, and we can just drag a little bit over it akin to a dry brush, so just to pick out the raised parts of the metal, and we can leave the rest in shadow. If you have any other metal colours, maybe don't paint all these panels, girders and corrugated sheets with the gunmetal, and leave them for another colour, just to add some variety like I'm going to do in the next step, or you can leave them black. I got a brass paint as part of the Warhammer 40k Imperium Partworks subscription, which provides us with minis, terrain, paints and accessories each week. If you're interested in seeing what you get in this magazine series, I'll leave a link here to this video where we got this paint, as well as some marines and necrons, including a unit of Scorpec destroyers. So with that same large wall piece now, you can see that we've painted the majority with that gunmetal, but we've just left a few pieces here and there we can now apply this Rune Lord Brass to, so a few of those girders, the corrugated sheet, the rim on the door, and just a few other odd bits of metal. We can do the same on the smaller pieces, like some of these scrap bits strewn about on this pile, and the radiator, and a few of the metal cylinders on another. Get your gold paint next, and pick out anything that looks fancy enough to merit this, such as, of course, the Imperial Aquila on the ammo crate. I also decided that the connector pins on the batteries could benefit from a bit of this gold, and the dial looking things on this scrap pile. We still have a few areas on these pieces that could benefit from some paint, so go for your grey paint now, and get some of these wires, or any parts that look like could be rubber, like tubes, etc. You can also use this colour to paint any masonry on these pieces, like the bases of these elevated platforms that look to be made from concrete and rebar. Grab your off-white paint next, and just check over the pieces for any cloth wraps, like on the frame around the door on this wall, or on the hastily wrapped up pipe on this canister, and just give these a quick coat. Finally, get your silver paint, and much like the gold, find a few items or areas you want to stand out, and pick these out with the lighter colour. I'm painting the wrench against the wall on this piece, as well as the light fixtures on the larger walls, and just a few of the bits and pieces propped up against it. If you have the heart for it, you could also go through and pick out the bolts and pins that don't have any metallic paint on them yet. And there we go, got a good mix of colours and metallics on a wide range of terrain pieces, but using that purple paint throughout so this all looks like it's owned by our commando boys, and these are now ready for wash to be applied. Now, if you're anything like me, you only own tiny pots or bottles of wash that will be empty by the time one of those wall pieces was only half finished. 
And, like everything in this hobby, these are expensive, damn it. So, I took to YouTube to try and find a cheaper alternative, and came across this video from Midwinter Minis, who suggested a recipe we'll be following here for making a cheap dip wash, which should be perfect for our rocky terrain. So, we're going to need PVA glue, acrylic medium, and black ink. I'll leave links to the items I bought for this in the description below, so if you wanted to try making this yourself, you can find those down there, and since they're affiliate links, they won't cost you any extra money, but a percentage will go to help support the channel. I wanted to add a bit of extra muddy colour to my wash, so I also decided to include some brown ink too. You'll also need water, something to mix your wash in, and something to measure these ingredients out. I'll be using a half tablespoon from my kitchen. So I'm putting in a half tablespoon of black ink and a half of brown, but if you're just using one colour, by all means, put in a tablespoon of this. And it wouldn't be a jam hammer video if I didn't immediately pour this all over myself and everywhere. You may also want to grab some kitchen roll or a cloth to wipe up inevitable spillage. Then a tablespoon of medium, followed by a tablespoon of PVA, and then next grab your water, and we want eight tablespoons of water. We can also add just a drop of dish soap to help this flow too, but this is optional, so only add it if you have some available. Now, after doing a test patch, this wasn't quite as dark as I wanted, so I went back and added an extra half tablespoon of black ink too. The recipe then is one part black ink, one part medium, one part PVA, eight parts water, uh, an optional half part of brown ink, and then an optional drop of dish soap. Give this all a very thorough mix and keep it in an airtight container like a plastic tub or a jar. Now grab up your train and if your tub is big enough and your train is small enough, dunk it on in. If not, get a large brush and apply liberally all over the train. Ensure that everything gets a coat of this and allow the excess to drip off back into your storage container. You'll also need a dry brush just to move the wash around and stop it from pooling and leaving tide marks, especially on some sort of big flat pieces of terrain. Go through all your pieces and repeat this wash and then leave these to dry for several hours. Ideally, leave them overnight and on something you don't mind getting wash dripped onto. Once these are dry, they should look something like this. Not bad compared with store-bought wash. Cheers, guy. So, this terrain is now tabletop ready and can be used in your games of Kill Team or 40k. But there are a few little bits we could do just quickly to add a little bit more depth to our terrain. If you grab your red and a little bit of yellow like this, we can get a nice warm orangey red colour. Then get an old brush, or a dedicated dry brush if you have one, work this thoroughly into the bristles, and wipe most of it off on a piece of kitchen paper. Next, lightly dust this colour all over any of the red pieces on your terrain, and then still catch the raised areas and add some variety to the colours, and it'll also make it look like some light is hitting these features. Since we have the yellow out, we'll do the same thing for the yellow bits of our terrain too, but this time we'll lighten the colour with a little bit of white, and do the same, just drag a dry brush loaded with this colour all over, and especially paying attention to corners and raised areas. Keep your white on standby, and add a little bit to your accent colour, so for me it's purple, and we'll dust this over the raised parts and edges of the purple areas. Need to be careful with this, as there's a lot of white here that we don't want to taint with this dry brush, but we can always touch this up later with a bit more white if need be. Add a little yellow to your dark green too, and dry brush any parts you painted green, like the edges and decorations on the ammunition crate here. Last, but certainly not least, grab your black paint and add in a little bit of white so we have a dark grey colour, and then we want to apply this to all the areas that we've left black. Now most of these areas will be quite flat and featureless at the moment, as they're essentially the same as they were after that very first base coat layer, so make sure to apply this and catch some of those raised parts and add just a little bit more depth and variety, so to the tyres, any wall panels, doors or floors that we've not applied another colour to. You can also grab your orange paint, add a little bit of water, 
load up your brush with this and carefully flick this color on any bits that you want to look like it's corroded and rusted. So a few splashes on bits of metal here and there will create a neat effect and help the terrain to look even more decrepit. Finally, grab an old sponge, cut off a small piece like this and dab it into some of your silver paint. And then much like the orange, we can just add a little of this to areas to make them look weathered. Don't need to add too much of this, but just a spot or two on areas that could have been scraped or scuffed on the battlefield, or even on the painted pieces where paint may have so aged or flaked away, revealing the metal underneath. And that's it! We now have a table full of painted terrain. With a few extra bits of work that we've added, we've made it look like these walls and piles of scrap metal have seen countless battles already, with plenty more yet to come as they see service in our games of 40k and Kill Team. Thank you so much for watching this video, I hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, please consider liking it, subscribing to the channel and clicking the bell to be notified of new videos being released. Please let me know how you're getting on with painting your terrain and minis in the comments below, and if you haven't already, do check out the link to our Instagram page, which you can find in the banner or in the description below to see a few pictures of this terrain in action. You may even see a few of the Death Core of Krieg minis lurking around in the background of these photos. Now, these models are almost ready, so if you're enjoying this Octarius content, please do keep an eye out for that painting video coming soon to the Jamhammer channel. Thanks again for watching.